In this session, I want to talk about the success to the successful archetype. This structure is actually two reinforcing loops that, that interact in such a way that it causes one loop to, to grow and the other one to actually diminish. The situation is such that the resources provided on one side are responsible for the success on that side and resources on the other side are responsible for the success on that side. And then someone or something, whatever, is, is doing a comparison of the success of the two and it's allocating resources based upon that comparison. So if the, two, if the success of the two is essentially equivalent, it's allocating resources equally and the success of the two continues pretty much in parallel. Though if for some reason or another, one, either A or B, demonstrates more success than the other, because of the nature of the structure, it will then allocate more resources to whichever one of them is more successful. And because they're reinforcing loops, any little bit of additional resources ends up being amplified very readily so that if B should demonstrate slightly more success than A, it will end up getting more resources and demonstrating more success than A because the allocation of resources to A has been diminished. So the more success B demonstrates, the more resources it gets and the fewer resources A gets, so its success declines. And, and this structure will cause things to become extremely lopsided very readily. When you implement this as a stock and flow simulation model, again, you end up with the obvious nature of things where it's much easier to describe things in causal loops than it is in, in stock and flow simulation structures. Because what we had to do is we had to se separate these two allocations so that we created one reinforcing loop for A and one reinforcing loop for B. And this is the allocation based upon the comparison of the cumulative success of the two of them. There, there needs to be a stock in the, in the loop someplace, otherwise it's just not going to work. And a factor, which is just set at point four, to indicate the extent to which that offset is is put into play, and the allocation is 1 plus the allocation to B and 1 minus the allocation to A. So it's just one is just the opposite of the other. So, and, and this, the when and pulse here, were set up so that at a particular point in time, I could sort of jolt the model and tell it that, that B has slightly more success than A so that it will run in steady state for a while and then actually experience that difference between the two so I can see what happens. So if I run this model with the factor of 0.4 and the pulse of zero, meaning there is no offset, the cumulative success of the two of them is in parallel. You can only see one of them because they just happen to be right on top of each other. And it will continue in this manner because the resources are allocated equally. But if I now go ahead and say that I'm going to simply add slightly more resources to B than to A, you notice that at time four where that where that happens, that they begin to vary and B begins to demonstrate far more results than A very readily. And, and the, the pulse was actually 0 0.1. I mean, it was a very small difference, but it begins to amplify very quickly. And it's just the nature of the reinforcing structure. And if we go ahead and and simply apply a little bit more of a variance, 
notice that that the resources are allocated in such a way that that B continues to demonstrate tremendous success and, and A demonstrates no success any longer. They're, they're just, they've been uh, completely derailed. So the, the approach to dealing with this situation is, you know, and the sad thing about it is seldom is it ever realized ahead of time. And more often than not, it's not even realized after it happens. It's typically just assumed that that one person or one group is is less performant than another, and time isn't spent to investigate beneath the surface to realize that that they are in fact victims of what's happening in the structure and the allocation. This is off. This structure is sometimes called the um, oh, what is it? Self-fulfilling prophecy, where I think that that Tina is is smarter than Susie, so I spend more time coaching Tina, and therefore she performs better than Susie. So um, I've been proven correct, and I continue to coach Tina and not Susie, and Susie becomes a failure. Well. Tina becomes a superstar because of all the coaching that she's been given. And the and we do that at times without even realizing that we've made that judgment, um, which is why I continue to say that, that we need to spend time to challenge the assumptions under which we operate. Um, much of the time that we spend, we operate in autopilot, not aware of the, the biases under which we actually decide to do things. But, so the, the approach for this structure is when you see it happening, ask yourself, is there actually an underlying basis to, to what's happening? Is it really the, the group or the individual that's at fault or are they being under-resourced in some way that's causing them to be less performant than, than some other, than the other group? So it's, more often than not, it's a structural problem. So, hope you found. Oh, and there's a couple of examples in the um, external resources for this. And so slight variations on the the structure. I mean, the structure is the same, though it's just a slightly different scenario. So, hope you found this informative, and I'll see you next video. Bye.